Welcome back. Imagine Children's Museum in Everett offers a variety of fun and hands-on ways to introduce kids to STEM education, including one that takes the mystery out of robotics for kids who are even in preschool. Nick Spiker is the Program Innovations Manager at Imagine Children's Museum, so that's a fun job, and he creates robotics programs for visitors, pre-K school groups, and more. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So I've been watching you set up. This is yeah. pretty cool, but before we get to the specifics, tell me a bit more about the museum. Uh, sure, we are located in downtown Everett, and we are a place for kids and families to have fun while playing and to learn while playing. And and that's what the programs center around, learning. Mm -hmm. Robotics and what else? Oh, we have programs across the uh, STEM curriculum, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. We have story time. We have music programs. We have an art studio. So we really try to cover all areas that of learning. That sounds like a uh, fun learning. place. Yeah. A fun place. And when kids get hands-on with this stuff, early on they're not as frightened of it as like I don't want to touch anything because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to mess it up. But if you oh, start early, <laughs> I am going to mess it up. Okay, oh. so let's talk about how you teach um, robotics and how you use these devices. Yeah, so these are the robots that we use for different demonstrations at the museum and one of the ways that I like to start kids off with them is explain that robots have sensors just like your body has sensors to give you information about the world around you. You have two light sensors and sound sensors right at the top of your body that will help you to... That's a good way to think of it. Uh, get information about the world. The robot also has two light sensors on the left and right side. Okay. And so what we can do is we can actually use a flashlight and I am going to hand this to you. Alrighty. You aim that right at the front of this robot here and make sure we can see that spot because that's what the robot is going to be looking for. And we want to, oh, there we go. We want that to start the program and it is going to try to follow that spot. So it's going to move pretty quick and you can okay. kind of steer it around okay. as you go. There you, oh, you got it, you got it. Oh my goodness, you're a pro at this. That is so cool. Look at that. What if I do that? Where does he go? So now it's <laughs> still going to be looking go. for the brightest spot it can find, but That's it's a little less cool. obvious. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So the robot also has sensors that we can't uh, see that don't uh, work the same way as uh, our sensors in our body. So for example, it has those two light sensors. It also has a third one on its uh, backside here. And we can use that to help tell the difference between light and dark on the floor. So as soon as we start that off, and let's look at it going back and forth to see. Right. Yeah, it's, where it's kind of go. finding where that border of the line Can is. Can it turn the corner? Oh, yes. yes, it does. That is so cool. What do you find young kids find most fascinating about this? Uh, you know, they when they start out, they find these really accessible because they just kind of look like you know Lego cars. Right. And so uh, they immediately, you know, when they see it running, uh, especially preschoolers, they like to just watch it or maybe start chasing it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as I sit them down and say, no, you actually have ways to control this robot. And I hand them the flashlight and things like and that. And they do that. They, so how easy are these to program and is that part of what you teach the kids? Uh, we do some programming. We actually have a um, uh, program where we can make uh, pictures with the robots. Oh, we make robot art. Yeah. And this is literally... Should I turn this guy oh, off yeah, before you know what? he... Let's Stop that? that one okay. for, <laughs> so it rest, doesn't dude. distract it's us. Okay. Uh, so we built these little uh, holders to put onto the back of the robot, and we can put a pen in there. Oh, that's neat, and that's actual yeah. Legos, isn't it? Uh, so, so yeah, they're Lego compatible, um, and uh, this is a piece we actually made on our 3D printer, which right. is another piece of technology. But uh, all we're doing here is we've given this robot two simple commands. The first command is to go forward, mm -hmm. and then the second command is to start spinning, to spin a certain number of degrees to the left. Um, that's really simple, and the thing that I like to tell the kids is robots don't get bored. They don't get distracted. They don't get tired. So if we tell them to do those two commands over and over and They'll over and over it. again, it's one of the most powerful ways that robots work for us is that they can just do all those repetitive tasks. Okay. So this robot's already programmed. We turn it on and we start the program and you're going to see it do that forward and left and forward and left and forward and left and oh, look at by that. doing it's that it just makes that flower. Oh how great is that? Yeah. And so if that uh, flower doesn't... have a little robot music. There we go. <laughs> if that flower doesn't look quite right to you we can mm -hmm. always stop that and we have another one that's programmed a little differently with a different amount forward and a different amount left. 
And so when we start that program, now it kind of makes a different shape, thing. right? So, so I'd never really thought about that, but robotics, yeah, of course, just like any sort of machinery just keeps working and working and absolutely. working. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons that we like to use them is that they can do repetitive tasks over now, and over again. If kids learn some of this as preschoolers, mm -hmm. um, how soon can we teach them things like simple coding? You know, they can actually ac access coding uh, really easily um, from kindergarten onward. There are a lot of different... Kindergarten. Um, oh yeah, something? there are free and uh, accessible programs on the web that uh, parents can set their kids up with. We try to uh, explain. Oh, you're getting a little oh. out of control there, robot. <laughs> we ran into each other as they got bigger. Yes, yeah, so the sensors weren't on for that. Exactly. Um, yeah, so and they... I'm sorry, go ahead. So uh, there are a lot of things that are free and accessible to the web, so we try to inform parents so that when their kids are sitting in front of the screen, it's not just screen time that's passive, but they're actively learning and being learning creative. And now, is it Robotics Month? Is that what's happening now? Are you guys celebrating this? Uh, this is National Robotics Week. And Week? So, I want it to be yeah. a month it so we be, can continue yeah. to play. <laughs> uh, well, we do it all year round, I'd imagine. We have a lot of different um, STEM programs and robotics. We bring them out all the time. We have an after school program that we take these robots out to. Uh, I taught a preschool class with these robots recently and they were having a blast with it. I so. can see why. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll make sure that people know exactly where you guys are and what programs are available and how they can get in touch with you. Thank Excellent. you. Still ahead on New Day, see why the flu season is still packing a pretty serious punch here in Washington State and how to stay well. We'll be right back.